Hi, so now we're back again to talk about um, the adaptive immune system. So first we talked about the innate immune system, which is what we are born with. And now we're going to talk about the adaptive part of the immune sy system, which is acquired. Um, it's a very specific process, whereas the innate immune system was very non-specific. Um, so the adaptive immune system can be categorized into two separate categories. It's going to be our cell-mediated category and our um, antigen-mediated category. So first we'll talk about cell-mediated. Um, in the cell-mediated, it's going to be an attack on intracellular pathogens, so an infection inside the cell. So we have cytotoxic T cells, um, and these are going to attack infected cells or, or cancerous cells. We also have helper T cells, um, and these cells kind of get everyone on board to defend. So they're kind of like, yo, like this pathogen's in here, like I'm calling you, I'm calling you, I'm calling you, and I need you guys to do your jobs. Um, so the T cell, which is our cytotoxic T cell, it has to recognize a specific antigen, which is different than our last system. So the cytotoxic T cells have receptors on them, and these receptors are very specific to certain antigens. And a, a T cell is actually not even going to know that an antigen is present unless an APC cell presents it to them. So an APC cell is an antigen presenting cell. And what these cells do is they're actually presenting um, a peptide of the antigen on their cellular surface. So they're gonna have something that's called an MHC2 marker on them that's gonna be holding a piece of the antigen to let them know, hey, I am a self cell, but look at this dude that I caught. Um, we need to go out and find this guy. So it's really, really cool actually. Um, so the, the antigen presenting cell will present the antigen, the, the cytotoxic T cell, if the receptor fits that specific antigen, that's gonna activate the T cell. And once the T cell is activated, it's gonna go into um, colonial selection. Um, and this is gonna incur, occur in our lymph, our lymph node. So what's happening in clonal selection is we're gonna create um, not only more cytotoxic T cells, but we're also gonna create um, memory T cells. And what this is gonna do is the second time we're ever exposed to this pathogen, we're already gonna know what it is right away and we're going to be able to attack it a lot quicker because we're already gonna have our army set up to defend for this foreign invader. So um, colonial selection. So we're gonna create our army. It's gonna leave the tissue and it's gonna go to wherever the pathogen is. Um, and so the way the cytotoxic T cell um, attacks and kills is it can release gran gran granulosomes. I don't know if I'm saying that right. But pretty much what this does is it causes a premature cell death. Um, and then we have perforins again, puncturing holes into the cell wall, causing cytolysis. Or it can destroy the cell's DNA, so it'll just unravel and it won't function. It's, it's nothing. It's quite scary for that cell. Um, so this information is stored. So these are stored through our memory T cells, which means during first exposure, we have to go through this whole process, right? Where we have to first takes time before we even know that the antigen is there. And then, then we realize, oh crap, there's an antigen present. And then we have to do all this stuff to prepare for battle. Meanwhile, this antigen is already taking over and doing its deal and you, you feel sick. So after we ha go through our first exposure, the good thing is, is that we have memory T cells which means it's going to store um, the memory of this battle, what the antigen is and what we need to do to destroy it. So the second time you get exposed to this antigen, you're not even going to feel symptoms because as soon as it enters the body, our army is ready and it's going to get it. It's going to kill it. It's going to be done. And it's very quick. So that's a plus. Um, 
Once we go into the other part of adaptive, it's going to be antigen mediated and it's kind of similar. So in antigen mediated, um, we're going to have these, these cells called B cells. And um, funny thing is, is that the B cells actually work out in the extracellular fluids, whereas the T cells work inside the cell. So if we have a pathogen that's inside the cell and it's outside the cell, which happens, you know, um, it's going to activate both of these systems. It's going to activate both of these systems, and they're going to just demolish it. So, okay, so we have our B cell, and it's in the extracellular fluids, um, and it has antigen receptors on it, and it binds to an antigen. So what it's what's going to happen when the B cell binds to an antigen? It's going to engulf part of it, and it's actually going to also present this antigen. On, on itself, outside of itself. Um, and so what this is gonna do is it presents it outside of itself because a helper T cell is gonna come along and be like, oh crap, this isn't good. And it's gonna activate that B cell and let other people know, yo, there's an invader, we need to do our job as the immune system. So it's gonna activate that B cell and that B cell is gonna go through colonial selection itself. So the B cell is going to create more B cells and then it's going to create plasma cells and then it's going to create memory B cells. And plasma cells are really cool because plasma cells are actually going to create um, antibodies. And these antibodies are going to be what actually helps to stop the, the pathogen, the antigen itself. That's why it's antigen mediated. Um, so what do these antibodies do? So uh, they're not as forward as um, our killer T cells or our natural killer cells. Um, but what it does is just as good. I mean, the, the antibodies are going to disarm the pathogen. So it's really interesting. It's going to neutralize the antigen. It's going to block it from attaching to our cells and taking over. So it can't get in, it can't do it, its job, or it's going to make it so it can't move. It's going to immobilize it. Um, it's just stuck where it's at. You know, it's not going anywhere. It can also cause them to englutinate, so it can make them all just come together and stick together in a cluster, um, and then hopefully the rest of the body can, like, avoid it. Um, it also, antibodies also enhance the complement system, um, and enhances phagocytosis. So uh, during first exposure, we have to go through this whole entire process um, before we can start fighting off all of these antigens. So you're going to feel sick. It's the same kind of thing. But um, once you go through the process, uh, your body starts fighting back, which is great. But it's also going to create the memory B cells which are going to remember that specific antigen and it's already gonna have the army waiting for it. So when second exposure hits, you're gonna have immunologic memory. And so there's probably gonna be no symptoms because the attack is going to be so quick and so specific. Um, this is what immunocompetence is. And another example of how you can kind of achieve immunocompetence besides um, just it entering and doing it like that, well, it still does that, but you'll catch my drift in a second, is going to be a thing like a vaccine. So with a vaccine, they're inje injecting you with, you with a little bit of, of the foreign antigen that causes this process to happen, but without it being harmful to the body. And so it's going to cause colonial selection to happen. And so your body will create those memory B cells and whatnot. And it's already going to know what to do in case that antigen comes in full force um, from not like a vaccine. You can also go through this process by um, getting antibodies through mother's milk and breastfeeding, which is great. Um, and those are also examples of how you can produce immunocompetence. Um, so I also wanted to take a moment to touch on antigen presenting cells because they were mentioned a couple times, but we didn't really go into it. Um, an antigen presenting cell is a dendritic cell 
macrophages and the B cells. And pretty much what they do is they ingest the, the antigen and they break it up into little peptide fragments, little proteins. Um, then they create an MHC2 marker and they create this inside them and then they push it out onto their membrane, like outside their body, like think of it as like your skin. And so I have like all these little name tags or flags sticking out of me that say, I'm me, but here's this bad guy. Don't hurt me, but go find this bad guy because it's in the body. Um, and that's the purpose of an antigen presenting cell. I hope you liked this take on the immune system. It's very simplified. And I do these videos as a way for myself to study and to retain the information by trying to teach it. But obviously I'm a student and this is just like my brief summary. So if you're having a hard time understanding these concepts and you need it in the most basic watered down um, way to absorb it, my videos are good, but I would not rely on my videos um, for exams. So just keep that in mind. Thanks for watching.